Okay, if your hair is curly and you wanna look more youthful, then you're gonna to wanna to avoid these top five mistakes. So we're gonna walk through them so you don't have to make them. And yeah, you're gonna be left looking more vibrant and youthful and fun and all that good stuff. So, ready? Let's dive into it. Okay, and if you're brand new to my channel, well, first of all, welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, but before we dive into this, I wanna make sure that you understand what I mean by youthful. I'm not talking about looking half our age. I'm saying that we wanna look more youthful for whatever age we're at. And all I mean by youthful is essentially looking more vibrant and confident and alive and energetic and all that stuff. So, yes, before we dive into me telling you that we're supposed to be looking a certain age, that's not my game. And with that said, let's dive into some tips. Okay, so the first mistake I see, <laughs> I feel like I am coming out of the gate strong, is having hair that's too long for your curl pattern. Okay, no, 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 hold on. I'm not saying long hair is a bad thing. What I'm saying is that if you've got curly hair, you likely know that there are a lot of different curl patterns. And then within all of those different curl patterns, there are on top of that different curls person to person, even within those patterns, right? So a lot of you probably have what we call multi-textural hair, where it might be wavier in one area and curlier in the next area, and even maybe straight in some areas. What can happen is, depending on how long your hair gets, that length can have a tendency, in some cases, to pull that curl out. Now, if you're in a situation where you have multi-textural hair, it might even pull it out more in those areas, and that would make it much harder for it to actually encourage the curl to look more even. Now, again, like I said, I'm not saying that you can't have long hair. I'm just saying that you wanna pay attention to the length and make sure that the length you have is functioning best for you, and not just length to have length. Now that we navigated that, let's move on to the next mistake. The next mistake is not layering your hair or not doing enough layering. So here's the reason behind this. Curly hair or wavy hair, it has a tendency as it grows to get fuller at the bottom. The problem with that is it has a tendency to bring the eye down. Because of that compounding effect and because the bottom gets so wide, it has a tendency to make the roots or the top look flatter. That actually compounds this overall optical illusion, creating even more of the illusion of that triangular shape. Now the other aspect of this is not layering your hair will have less movement. And a large part of, to me, what creates the vibrance and the life in the overall shape is some sort of movement to the hair. So it's not to say that one length hair is just not an option. It's simply to say that without some sort of layering, it's not gonna have the ability to open up the shape that can be created with curly hair. Since we aren't utilizing a lot of tools, flat irons, round brushes, et cetera, et cetera, to create shape in your hair, we are relying on the shape to be cut into the hair. This is what allows us to relieve bulk from certain areas to accentuate specific things about your face shape that we want to accentuate, help lift the eye up, help lift the face up, and all of these things combined with movement and all of that gives it more of a youthful appearance. Now, let's move on to the next mistake. Okay, and the next mistake is using the wrong product. If you're using a product in your hair right now, you let your hair get completely dry and your hair is super wet looking and really crunchy and you can't break that product up and make it look a bit more dry and a bit softer, then to me, that would be the wrong product for you to be using. The bigger problem with this is many times that wet look can also be very heavy. It has a tendency to weigh the hair down, making it look a bit flatter and not have quite the same movement and flow that you want. Now, now, with that said, this isn't to say that all products that make your hair look wet after they're dry are bad. In fact, I would actually argue, oddly enough, it's a little bit of the opposite of that. If your product is not creating some sort of that wet look in your hair once it's dry, it may not be enough to control the frizz. So with that said, don't shy away from those products completely. Just make sure that once you get your hair completely dry and it looks crunchy and wet, that you can then go in and manipulate it, scrunch your hair up, break that product up with your hands and make it look soft. Okay, now let's move on to the next mistake, which actually deals with the drying process. Okay, so the next mistake I see is not using a diffuser when you're actually blow drying your hair. Now I understand a lot of folks with curly hair don't blow dry. A lot of you will allow it to air dry, which is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the case that you're using a blow dryer to speed up that blow dry time or to enhance curl or to decrease frizz or whatever it may be, if you're not using a diffuser, the probability is high that you're gonna be struggling with keeping the frizz out of your hair. Part of what has a tendency to 
really kind of pull some of the youthful appearance out of curly hair is the dryness. We've talked about it before, we'll talk about it again. So using a diffuser is going to help diffuse the airflow. It's going to help to minimize the manipulation on the cuticle, and that is going to help reduce frizz and reduce that illusion of dryness. So if you're gonna be drying your hair, use a diffuser, make sure you use it correctly, and yeah, that's important. And that view doesn't suck. <laughs> True, right? All right, I'm gonna hang on here, look at this, and uh, let's get back to the next tip. Okay, so the next mistake is doing the wrong kind of color. Yes, it deals with color, but follow me here because this is something that a lot of people miss, and it's super important. Now, in any case, regardless curly or straight, when you're talking about color, something that really has a tendency to drag the life out of things is when the color looks too monotone, too one color. Natural hair is not one color. There's always a little bit of dimension in it. Typically speaking, hair tends to lighten in the front quicker and more aggressively than it lightens in the back. The thing about curly hair is that when you're highlighting or low lighting, so adding light pieces or dark pieces to curly hair, if you use the same size of section, meaning it's the same size thickness of highlight or low light, it'll have a tendency to get lost in the wave or the curl, and that can have a tendency to make things look more monotone. You actually need to take larger sections, chunkier highlights, to create the same illusion of dimension that thinner highlights can create in straighter hair. Now another thing, I'm gonna piggyback on color here. So I've talked about the right color for your skin tone in other videos, so make sure you go check those out, and that pertains to straight or curly hair. But one thing about curly hair is many times, because curly hair does actually tend to be drier than straight hair, one of the things you wanna know when it comes to color is the lighter colors you go with, the more they'll have a tendency to make hair, in general, look a bit more damaged or a little bit drier. The chemicals necessary to create lighter looks also are typically harder on the hair. But just remember that darker tones, so maybe adding low lights into that curl instead of highlights, reflect light differently and can tend to make the hair look shinier and healthier, which will look less dry. Out of those are all the tips. That's how you look more youthful. Okay, I'm standing in front of a waterfall if you haven't noticed. Um, so I'm gonna hang out here and enjoy this. Why don't you go ahead and watch this video. There's a link in the description below where you can find this one. And for the rest of you, Want to read some comments? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, okay, let's read some comments. So let's see here, what do we got? Uh, we've got aim to be tall. Oh my gosh, I hope that is your name. Aim to be tall, I love that. Uh, heads up, I am what we would call not tall. So that cracks me up, I love it. Okay, anyway, so aim to be tall says, do you think hair that used to have thick strands and have become finer over the years can regain thickness again? So there's two different things at play. There's the density of your hair, meaning how many actual hair follicles you have, versus the actual thickness of or diameter of each individual hair. So in this scenario, if you're talking about over time you have seen less hair, meaning some of that hair has fallen out and now your overall thick density of hair has gotten thinner, I have seen that reversed. Um, I haven't seen it reversed without continuing to use specific products. So I'm actually doing a video here coming up pretty soon all about different systems that will help hair regrowth and whether or not they make sense for you and if they work and all that stuff. But if you're talking about individual hairs becoming finer versus thicker in their diameter, I've never actually seen that happen one way or the other. So I don't know if that was any help at all. <laughs> I hope it helped a little bit. All right, next comment. So we got Kathy Nicholson that says, I know I'm late to the game on this video, but what are your thoughts on backcombing? It's a great question. So I personally am a big fan of volume with movement. And by what I mean by movement is not necessarily hair flying all over the place, but if you shake your head, I feel like you should see your hair move around a bit. The concern with backcombing is that more often than not, it creates a very stiff volume. It's a bit like over spraying your hair with hairspray. That can make it look just too contrived. And that actually, to me, has a tendency to look a little bit less youthful. So for me, I'm not a huge fan of backcombing. There's also the bigger concern of the fact that backcombing can create damage. It's very hard on the hair, especially depending on your texture of hair. So for me, I just feel like there are other ways to create the same volume and have more movement, get a better result, and be ultimately less damaging. 
Okay, the next comment comes from Amy Collins. Has anyone ever told you that you look like Jeremy Renner? <laughs> oh, my, my wife is gonna flip out when she hears this. So yes, I have been told I look like Jeremy Renner multiple times, but hey, I'll take it as a compliment because uh, why not? So thank you. <laughs> and the last comment we've got today is Dora sometimes says, uh, duh, you're, oh, you know what? I'm gonna wait to read this. Uh, well, let's go home real quick. I'll read it there. Hey, babe. Hi. Hi. I was reading comments from a YouTube video, and somebody made this comment, and I thought, you need to answer it because it's about you. Okay. So the comment is, Dora sometimes, duh, your wife could be bald, and she'd still look beautiful. Smiley face. <laughs> Aww. I like that person. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now you need to end the video. What video? The YouTube video. This is a YouTube video. You're going to end it. So how are you going to end it? We well, out! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't work. What else are you going to try? Should we say maybe, okay, point to the left of the screen. So left, there you go, that side. Yep. And say, now watch this. Now watch this. Because? Because? You're going to learn something. You're going to learn something. And should they do anything else? And hit the bell and follow and subscribe and I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all of that. Okay. Give me that. Bye. Bye. Bye.